May we have the confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. With that, may we all greet one another. May we give thanksgiving to the astonishing grace of God. With that, the title for today is The Bartizan of Thanksgiving. Today is Thanksgiving Sunday, and we give glory to God. The word Thanksgiving literally means Thanksgiving for the harvest of barley. Thanksgiving Sunday traces back to the Feast of Harvest that the Israelites kept. When you look at the book of Exodus 23:14, God tells the Israelites, Three times in the year you shall keep a feast to me. This is not what man had made. The three feasts are the Passover, the Feast of Harvest, and the Feast of Ingathering. Periodically, Passover is in spring, the Feast of Harvest in summer, and the Feast of Ingathering in fall. The Korean Church keep Easter Sunday, the Feast of Harvest Sunday, and Thanksgiving Sunday. Especially, these three feasts contain very important spiritual meanings. It has the spiritual meanings. The walk of faith begins with knowing what the blessings of these three feasts are and realistically enjoying them. That's the start of it. Yes, going to church for the first time is the start of the walk of faith. But what is most important is knowing the meaning of these three feasts. The blessing of the Passover is to know and enjoy the fact that Christ had finished all the problems in our lives. The past, present, and future, he had completely finished all our eternal problems. That is the walk of faith. To celebrate that, God has made us keep the Passover, the last disaster that fell upon Egypt right before the Exodus was the killing of the firstborn upon Egypt that was like hell being slaves how can they come out it is the disaster that fell upon them and what is the last disaster The last disaster is that it, they did not come upon the houses on the Israelites who put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. Starting from the son of Egypt, king, all the firstborn was dead. So it was that upon the Israelites, those who put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost, they would pass over. An angel left death passed over that house because of that blood of the lamb, and there was no disaster. That was the sign. The angel of death would go to kill, and then they passed over. And that's why it is called a Passover. Christ is the only way to break down the 12 strong partisans that Satan has spread. From sin, curses, what is the way to come out of that? Christ. It is only Christ. The blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb. It's Jesus Christ. Christ. What does Christ mean? In other words, he is the savior. He has saved me. All people were to die. Billions of people. But he has saved me. 
It doesn't have anything to do with my character, with my standards. The Feast of Ingathering is the Feast of Gratitude for the storage of grain after the harvest for the ear, as they give thanksgiving for the Feast of the Grain. Because there needs to be sun, air, and rain. If there is no rain, no sun, then even if the farmer works hard, they will not be able to have the fruits. And it's the blessing of the Feast of Ingathering that is the Kingdom of God in our background, because that has nothing to do with our great efforts. As we go to work, have our business, if there are no blessings of God, then it is all a lie. We'll all go bankrupt. So what is our background? It is the kingdom of God. That's what it means. Children who have been saved, like so, we should live the walk of faith while enjoying the clear spiritual background as people who have the background of heaven and the citizenship of heaven. This is the walk of faith. You must be able to say, of this, when you're questioned, the Feast of Harvest has many names. It is also called the Feast of Weeks. As the Israelites kept it for seven weeks after Exodus, it is called the Feast of the First Fruits, as it gives the first fruits. And also the Pentecost, as they kept the 50th day to be special after the Passover. We're looking into the Book of Acts every week. Pentecost is the day when the Holy Spirit came upon Mark's upper room. It's all looking at the feast. Therefore, we should realistically experience and enjoy how great of a blessing it is to live a life filled with the Holy Spirit is through the Pentecost and the Feast of Harvest. You receive salvation, you have the kingdom of God, and now all you have to do is be filled with the word, filled with Christ filled with the Holy Spirit. All you have to do is enjoy that. If that does not take place, it is all a lie. What's the evidence of that? There is no thanksgiving. There is no happiness. There is no enjoyment. It is all the snares of Satan. And all the blessing of the Passover is Christ. The blessing of ingathering is the kingdom of God. And the blessing of the Pentecost is the filling of the Holy Spirit. So, through these three feasts, we can see the amazing plan of God. Through the feasts, he spoke of only Christ, only kingdom of God, and only the filling of the Holy Spirit. The life of the three onlys is the mainstream of the entire Bible and the, and the essence of the life of the walk of faith. But for most people, there is no only. It's half-heartedly done. So if you don't do the three onlys, Kingdom of God, only Christ, only the filling of the Holy Spirit, if this does not take place, you'll be the same as the people who are religious. The content is the same as the non-believers if this does not exist. It contains a special message of God to live the life of the three onlys for 365 days a year. It's to commemorate this. There is something we should pay attention to. God did not tell us to just live the life of the three onlys. He never meant for us to live a forced, difficult, reluctant life. Being burdened. Being in discomfort. These three feasts were festivals of gratitude to go toward the thanksgiving before God. God emphasized that we should live a life of the three onlys with thanksgiving. It's not just what we see, but it must be the thanksgiving festival that we live in. If that does not take place, we're all being deceived, so you must change.
God wants us to live the life of the three onlys in thanksgiving. Not only in the words of today's passage, but also in the words of God contained in the Bible, gratitude is never left out. The reason that God made people keep the three feasts and other feasts was to help us live a life of gratitude without changing throughout the year, all year long. Not just in the feasts. A life that builds a partisan of thanksgiving is God's will and plan. So, what about it? Satan is attacking us so that we cannot enjoy the three onlys with thanksgiving no matter what. Continuously having complaints, doing favors of Satan. Gratitude does not come from standing still. The weeds in the field grow well without any care. How does it grow so well? If it rains, it will grow taller and taller. We don't even take care of it. But what about the precious flowers? If it is left alone, it will die. You need to pour your love and sincerity for it to grow properly. Look at the people who grow orchids. How much care do they give? Likewise, the heart of complaints and resentments grows well in my heart by itself. Even if we don't pamper it, that's how we are born. Having resentments, complaints, it just comes out. But Thanksgiving is different. Thanksgiving will never grow unless we consciously think of it. Gratitude is to seek out and to find a title for it. So every week, I find a title for Thanksgiving and give thanks to God. I'm experiencing living in a very realistic way that gratitude is bound to give birth to gratitude. I am experiencing this every week. It just continuously comes out. The famous pastor and preacher, Spurgeon, also confessed to experiencing this mystery. He said, God gives electric light to those who look at the candle and give thanks, moonlight to those who appreciate the electric light, sunlight to those who appreciate moonlight, and heavenly glory that never fades to those who appreciate the sunlight. Gratitude breeds greater gratitude. That is why Apostle Paul emphasizes in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for it is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. You must give thanksgiving. It is to be proclaimed verbally. So now I am an expert for congratulatory services. People clap and people laugh when I go on stage. People keep on applauding. So I said stop because it was a bit embarrassing and awkward. So it's not even North Korea, but they were applauding. So I thought, oh, maybe I seem okay in front of these people's eyes. If you don't like them, why would they applaud? People feel it. Not by seeing how you look and your appearance, but with your heart. So we must always give thanksgiving and you must always be joyful. Don't cringe and give complaints. There will be nothing that remains. Satan will only go in that place. So what we must do is say it verbally, not with 
just your heart, but with your lips as well. And the forces of darkness that creeps, the curses, insomnia, panic attacks, depression. These are all what Satan gives. If you give Thanksgiving, even cancer will flee and be healed. Saying, oh, I'm th so thankful to God. Then illnesses will be cured. Upon all believers of Yuan Church, by the word, may be able to give the spiritual influence to God and others. Number one, thanksgiving for the grace of salvation, verses one to three. So today's verse and chapters 110 of Psalms, it's when they all give thanksgiving. Like the Pentateuch, the 150 Psalms are divided into five books. What is the starting point? It's saying, give thanks to the Lord Jehovah. That's the start. What must we not lose hold of? Who is the opponent of Thanksgiving? It is God. It is the Jehovah God. That's what it means. How are you going to start Thanksgiving? Giving things th giving to the Lord Jehovah. God. In the Bible, the first God to the Lord Jehovah has great spiritual meaning. It's that God has chosen us, given us the covenant, and keeps the covenant. When that is shown, that's when they say Jehovah. Especially when you look at the writer of Psalms. He says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for he is steadfast and endures his love. And that's why we must give thanksgiving. So God is good and endures us. It means that that's the greatest love, it's the one sided love. It's a covenantial love. And because this love is eternal, we must be able to give thanks to God. And God's greatest and steadfast love contains the meaning of the highest love, constant love, unconditional love, and covenantial love that bestows His children. And because of this amazing love, which is eternal, we should give our gratitude to God. What is the core of this love? It is redemption and the grace of salvation. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the troubled and gathered in from the lands, from the east, from the west, from the north, and from the south. The background of today's passage is the return from the Babylon captivity. In verses 10 to 11, it describes the situation that they disobeyed the word of God and were captured and held as captives of Babylon. Who is God? Even if you did wrong and failed, if you look for God, he will restore you. For 70 years, you were captives. They were in a state of darkness, and the shadow of death, and they were in distress, bound with chains. And it was an absolute state of powerless that they couldn't break free from, no matter how hard they tried. However, it is God who took full responsibility for his chosen people. 
fulfilling the covenant he made with them, and restored them as he had promised, bringing them back from their seventy years of captivity in Babylon and allowing them to return to Jerusalem. The word redemption in the passage means God paid a price and reduced His people from the hands of the enemies. In fact, the Israelites had done nothing. They did not fight or conquer anything. It was God who appointed King Cyrus of Persia to conquer Babylon and Cyrus returned after announcing saying an edict in Ezra 1.1 1, 1, and indeed reveals this fact. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord of, by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also put it in writing. God did it. This prophesizes that God, through Jesus Christ, would break down the bondage of Satan, shatter the power of death and provide salvation for mankind and the sin of death. In verse 14 of the passage, it states, He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and burst bonds apart. This is the redemption through the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Jesus came as the Christ to lead us out of darkness and the shadow of death. In breaking the unbreakable bonds of Satan that humanity could not solve on its own, he completely destroyed Satan's Twelve strong partisans that lead to eternal destruction. It was completely crushed. Therefore, we are no longer slaves of sin. Our identity has been completely restored from children of the devil to children of God. As we were when we believed in Jesus, when we were created, he set us free, no longer burdened by the yoke of bondage. I am free, you are free, we are free. Those who believe in Jesus, we are free from the law of sin and death. We are by law free. We don't have to pay the price as the price has been paid. Even if someone sues you, it doesn't matter. Your past, present, and future sins, the price has been paid. You must have this heart, this freedom upon a person's word being taken aback and lingering that in your heart, it doesn't matter. If I just enjoy the three passes, the three feasts, why am I? receiving influence by people's words. Is it that you feel bad when people look down on you and feel good when you are praised? It is the word of God, as the word of God has made you free. Galatians 5 1 reads, for freedom Christ had set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. It is a call to no longer be deceived, to stand firm, and to firmly establish a partisan of true freedom given by the gospel. How thankful is this? Likewise, the grace among grace that we should be most thankful for is the redemption through Jesus Christ. It is the grace of salvation. In fact, the moment we lose our gratitude for salvation, complaints and resentments erupt. The grace of salvation. It just erupts. Complaints. Resentments. Look in the news. It's all about complaints and resentments. How can we live in this harsh world and have thanksgiving? It's with the thanksgiving of salvation. If you lose hold of that, you will have complaints. It just comes out. So for those people, they don't have this heart. 
all year long. If they do that, they are serious, saying always pessimistic words, doing favors of Satan. Then how can one say that that person receives salvation? With lips they say, "Lord, Lord," but is it that those who say that receive salvation? No, anyone can say that. Verse two reads, "Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom He has redeemed from trouble." Those who have been redeemed by God or saved are to say that God has saved them from the hands of the enemy. To say. In particular, the original language say here emphasizes that one should speak continuously, not simply say it once and stop. When we continually speak of God's grace and salvation, we naturally move to the place of gratitude. When we proclaim the grace of salvation given to us in the field, we will firmly build a baptism of thanksgiving. This is also the reason we are carrying out the theme of the movement. The field is. Myself and also the family, Satan wants to break down the family because it is the opponent of attack. In the field of Genesis chapter three, if you give Thanksgiving, light will shine. The darkness will flee. The three movements, the theme of theory. That's why we're doing this. When the soul returns to the Lord, what is the first confession that comes out of your lips? Is it not "Thank you, Lord"? One soul had come back to the Lord through me. How much Thanksgiving comes out every time you have someone be registered to the church, worship, and be settled down? Only those who have experienced this can know the taste. Even for pastors, there are people, actually the majority of those who don't evangelize, even if they graduated from seminary. For me, I was going out in the streets evangelizing, evangelizing in prisons, but there were people who would not even come, even once. Throughout all those weeks, and I questioned, would that person know how to give the acceptance message? There was a very popular pastor, and he had said, "Oh, as I received training in soul, now I can make a person come to acceptance." And I was in shock because I was. Able to do that since I was in college, and he gives a very good sermon. A very good sermon. Have you ever made a person come back to the Lord? Being rooted in worship. Is that person giving worship and doing the walk of faith here? The amens are decreasing. For those people, the husbands, the families don't know this. Other people don't know this. Is it the same? The elders? Is it all the same? Deacons? Is it all the same? You and church believers being able to have pounding hearts just by the word camp. Uh, that all year one believers will realistically experience God's grace of salvation in the field of your lives. Thomas Akempis wrote a famous classic called "Imitation of Christ." He said, "Grace always follows those who are grateful." Yes, grace always follows those who are grateful. It is a spiritual collaboration. A life that achieves spiritual grace of gratitude is a life that follows after Christ. I bless you in the name of the Lord that may all believers of Yuma Church will be able to have the overflowing grace of Thanksgiving, and that there will be the evidence of living a life of spiritual festivals every day. Number two, Thanksgiving for the grace of guidance, verses four to five. 
the writer of the Psalms expresses that the situation of the Israelites living in captivity of Babylon was like living in them wandering life on the desert in the road of wilderness. What is the wilderness like? The wilderness is truly a scene of different dangers. The life of those who lived in captivity in Babylon was a life of anxiety itself, unable to predict when and what would happen. The writer reveals that their souls were weakened, not to mention their spiritual pain of hunger and thirst. Their suffering continued until their souls became hungry and thirsty. Spiritually and physically, hunger and thirst is not a simple problem. There are so many people around us who are going through the suffering. Verse 6. Fortunately, the Israelites realized that the solution to their problems was in Jehovah God and cried out to God. The thankful thing is that God responded to the crises of the people like a father who accepted the prodigal son. It was like he accepted a prodigal son. That's how God answered. Even if you do wrong, you are still a child of God. Once you accept, it is eternally accepting. But as we live our lives, we have this and that happen. Even if we live a life without God, all we have to do is cry out and God will give you grace. Just cry out. God will answer. God is God who guides us in the right path. God is the one who makes things work together for the good. So the writer of Psalms emphasizes to praise God for his steadfast love and for his wondrous works in our lives. To give praise and thanksgiving. Actually, I have no other words but to give thanksgiving. When I look through the journey of my ministry in Yewon Church, every week, more and more, it overflows. Everything is a miracle and a grace that God has done. Passing through the IMF-controlled economic crisis and COVID-19 pandemic, we constructed the Remnant Cultural Center and consecrated the main sanctuary. No one can imagine this. What great miracle is this? How blessed are those who embrace it two through seven nations and are able to start the challenge towards the missions after our church consecration. Above all, you embracing the 237 nations in your heart itself is such a miracle. Then that's the end of it. Amen. That's why even Pastor Yu is envious. Even yesterday. Isn't it? He said, isn't it normal to pray for a nation? As an elder is in charge of a nation, are you not even interested? Even if you don't go, it doesn't matter because half of the nations we cannot even go. Even if we go because it's Muslim nations, we cannot go and we cannot preach the gospel there. It does not matter. All we are doing is praying for the gospelization of the ends of the earth. Because of the prayers for Paul and Peter, it still continues. Amen. Paul never came to Asia. He went around Europe and ended. 
but he received the crown and a reward for evangelization. It doesn't matter if you have money, speak the language. Prayer does not cost money or time. So may you be able to receive that reward. Specifically, how thankful is that? Having the flames of missions, the young adults, college students who are going around having the paradigm shift. Think about it. I said, what are they all those doing? And then right away they went on Saturday and they are doing it every week and in three weeks they're establishing a regional church and there was a couple who has a restaurant there so if you go to the field there will be the Priscilla Jason so the answer is in the field Samsung LG, you know what their slogan is? It's the answers in the field. So the world is doing that. So what are you doing? If you go to the field, all the problems of your family, your workplace, it will be finished. So it is a multi-blessing. I've experienced this. So these things are continuously happening. Embracing the two, three, seven nations, looking at it itself is a miracle. So that means that we are enjoying the blessing of the throne, transcending light and transcending space and time. God is guiding us and he will fulfill all things. All we have to do is be able to be guided by the word, following the word. You don't have to be bounded by the introductory things. 24 covenant. May you pray for that. See how God will work. God will be able to open doors and give you the finance for this. God, does God have no money? He is the creator. He will open doors and he will give you all things. And that's why it is missions, prayer, 24 hours. How exciting is this? We must look forward to this. Verse 9 says that God will give us satisfaction and he will fill us with good things. What does this mean? What does it mean to long for him? When we pray for that one nation, for those people, God will give what we need. It means to pray grabbing hold of the covenant, then he will fill you with the best and greatest things. You will see his glory when you believe. When you believe and be grateful, you will naturally be in the place of answers. Don't say pessimistic words. Meeting upon the ministry and departments may always encourage each other. Don't be stubborn. Like the church that has the gospel, being thankful. So may be able to leave behind the masterpiece of 24 and 25 hours. This is the conclusion. When Dr. Hans Selier, who received the Nobel Prize for Medicine for his studies about stress, did a farewell lecture in Harvard University. After his last lecture, he was getting a standing ovation, and while he was coming down from the stage, he received a question from a student. Professor, People in this age are living in the age of a flood of stress. What is one thing that can remove stress? 
and the hand said one word, Thanksgiving. It is medically proven. Being thankful is the key to release stress. We have doctors here. Stress. How can it be healed? By Thanksgiving. It has been proven. When you give Thanksgiving, happy hormones such as dopamine, serotonin, the happy hormones, they come out and make your heartbeat and blood pressure calm down and relax your muscles so that you'll be able to feel happy and released. Amen. I really want to be healthy. If you want to look young, may you be able to give Thanksgiving. These hormones have the power to kill. the cancer cells. Amen? Then you will be happy in your spiritual and physical life. The word recorded in the Bible already suggested that it is so that we may live our lives full of vitality even before it was scientifically and medically all proven. If you give thanks 24 hours according to the word, darkness flees away and cancer is are healed. I bless you in the name of the Lord that may all you unbelievers continue the walk of faith with full of vitality and real raise the solid partisan of gratitude and celebration of the Feast of Harvest.